Okay, this is Goragoa. It's a game by uh, Jason Roberts, and it's kind of like an art book puzzle game. One that I've played through a couple of times already, uh, and I really, really like. Uh, the way that we interact with it is just by kind of clicking in the frame. So we can uh, zoom out from here. Mostly it'll sort of tell itself. I'm just going to kind of guide it along. But I'd love to hear what you think of it because uh, I'm really, um, really love it. This is why I'm playing it through for the third time. Also, my uh, my little girl Clara sat and played it through with me for the second time, uh, and she wanted me to record a YouTube video of it so that she could kind of sit and watch it in her bed, watch the whole thing through. So this is for Clara as well. So here's this lad kind of flicking through his book. I love that effect of kind of turning the pages. It's different in his thought bubble. So now what we can do, we've got these hints on, right? So I can just click anywhere in the frame and it'll kind of show me what I can interact with. So we'll click into there. And so what this is hinting at is there's some kind of ritual down here going on. And this is the uh, kind of dragon, dragon bird creature that was uh, we saw out in the world. We can click in here into this bowl. Then we can go back out from there and what happens often is as you kind of jump in and out of these scenes the kind of context changes now the kind of real meat of the game starts and here we go what it's telling us is that we can move uh, we can move these around so we move that and actually what we're doing is we grab the kind of window frame and straight away we progress the story along So we can kind of move that, but nothing happens. We can click in there. So let's kind of let's. I'm going to try and stop saying kind of. I realised after my little girl was uh, girl was guild chat appearance that I say kind of far too much. So if I if you hear me saying kind of, just tell me in chat to stop it. It's a little verbal tick of mine. Okay. So there we go. We move that, and we've got another frame of the doorway, and it's opened up another scene for us. Possibly the same boy now in a wheelchair. And a bird. Another thing this game does really interestingly and really brilliantly is um, you kind of link up these frames. You can link up disparate situations by using the, um, the same frames. Okay, so we can zoom out there. Jumping ahead. There's the boy. We've got the blue bowl. And the next thing we're going to do is try and find the kind of five coloured fruits to go inside the bowl. We can get him up onto this roof by dragging that up and he'll walk on through. And so that sort of gives you a general feel for how this is going to work. So he's not in the room anymore. What we can do is now click into here. And you see how that snaps together. So all of a sudden this picture is now joined up with the bird. We can even go one step further. And there's our first magic moment. There's our red fruit. And it's my favourite bit is after you get a fruit, you kind of uh, we can we can we can zoom out and see how usually all of the panels have changed in the kind of context of what you're looking at. Sometimes the time of day shifts. Uh, sometimes uh, it triggers kind of actions for the characters in the frame. So this is telling us with the speech bubble that we need to try and carry the bowl in this background up from there to there. And actually, we've got to we've got a door here, so we can get the get the boy through into that scene and 
then going ahead, we can use another door to get him back here and onto this roof. So the door to that garden that was on the sign has been bricked up. Got to figure out how we're going to get through. So what we can do is that then becomes the frame. And then we can put the door itself through into the wall. As I say, I've played this through a couple of times already, so most of the puzzles I pretty much understand now. If anyone has any questions, I'd love to talk about it. But I would we'll go for sort of like a at a reasonable clip, I think. Okay, so she's holding a fruit, but it's not the right color. So again, we can move that off. And he looks possibly the same character. Looking at his papers, thinking of the dragon's face. As we click deeper in. Now this is this is one thing I really uh, enjoyed, particularly the first time I saw it. So now, there's nothing I can click there if I try to move it. It actually moves the hole, depending on where you are. Which I think is fantastic. So the dragon's eye becomes our green apple. This game is absolutely magical. Even though I've already finished it multiple times, uh, I still keep coming back to it. Oh, hi, Sandra. So those first two, um, I don't know if you caught the red and the green for it. The first two are definitely kind of introductory ones to a few concepts. Um, it gets it gets a fair bit harder. As I say, I kind of know most of the puzzles now, so we won't we won't uh, struggle on them too much. But it definitely scales up. So next we're going to need this yellow fruit. I think it's interesting that it looks like it's the same character in all of these frames so far. Looking through his book. And now we can't because the light's knocked out. So how can we help him out? Okay. So then we can kind of do our usual thing of move all the other scenes around and see what see what comes out so here we've got a lantern that's possibly useful if we need to try and get a light to him so what we can do here is that actually becomes a frame like the others do we can drop it over that star and then all of a sudden we've got a lamp we captured the star but how are we going to get the star to him so this boy in the dark Click on three. It's another lamp. And another star. And there again is like joining two separate scenes. As soon as things start to, to match up. So the reason this is tipped this way is because this is a big box of nails and this is a box of uh, pencils. So if we can make this end lighter, then the lamp should go into the boy scene. We drag this off, it becomes the box frame, zoom out in here, and we've got some cotton wool. We'll do the same in here and look for something heavy, uh, like a bag of rocks. And then all of a sudden, physics takes over. What he doesn't have is a light at the moment. we can fix that for him. Hmm. 
Yeah. This game has a lot of wow moments. Like this. Then we look at the butterfly's wing. And now we're back here. And now he's thinking back. Is he thinking to his past, possibly? It doesn't matter, because we can do that. Go from his thoughts. And move along to the next scene. I absolutely adore the soundtrack for this as well. I need to see if it's... Um... Actually, I think, it, I think it, it came in like the deluxe edition. I need to see if I can upgrade, because it's, um, it's, it's everything about this game is just gorgeous. I think this is actually available as a mobile game. I know you mentioned you, that's what you're playing at the moment. If you do fancy playing it through. My main hope now is just that there's a follow-up because I the puzzles in this are so clever and not anything like not like anything I've seen or played before. Okay, so this is sort of like a callback to what we've just done. Well this time the moth. That we need to get so we need to light the lamp and we need to free this moth from its uh, little glass cage I love this kind of hinting at what we need to do now this one I'll just play it through and this really taps into that whole idea of like joining backgrounds up but with an extra kind of uh, an extra element so you see these yellow banners, all right. So now, if we join those banners up, the rock's actually going to fall down into that scene. Then you see there's these green and red ones. And so we just kind of flip these two scenes backwards and forwards. And then we quickly jump inside there. And there's our moth. So the next thing we need to do is light our lamp, uh, which we've done with stars. Uh, and what's he thinking about in his book? Yeah, you guessed it. This is another one of those gorgeous puzzles where you move it around. There's the star we need. And now we're back in the courtyard again. This game just makes me smile. Okay, definitely the same guy, now he's a bit older. Okay, there's a couple of interesting things here. Again, the speech kind of thought bubbles are always giving us like an eye into his research of what we need to do next and so what this is showing us is kind of there's a bright star here and there's a dial here with a red and blue hand at certain positions so let's dive back in okay there's a dial up here with a red hand on it aha and so this becomes a frame. Uh, 
has is this. There's a blue hand. So the blue hand I think is what's going to point to the star. Yep. She tells us here, look. Okay. Let's see. Even though I've done this. Ah, there's a star. That's the one we want. There we go. So now the compass is going to point towards the star. This is some kind of uh, scientific apparatus. And this is another one where you join the bottoms up, so to speak. One more. And that heats it up. And move around. Put the two together. Now we put it up here. It's going to become the clock. And then we zoom out, and time has moved forward. And there he goes. It's one of my favorite parts of this is where you kind of get to the end of a puzzle and all four uh, kind of, of squares will collapse back into each other into like a single scene. Okay, we've got red, green, yellow. Blue's next. This is fabulous, obviously. So by looking at these kind of uh, post-it notes, it would suggest we need to get through from one picture to the next. He's thinking about the boy falling. And there's our friend the dragon. And then we get into the second picture. Okay, so now it seems we need to find something which matches up with uh, this terrain so that you can walk into the next one. There's three things we can click on here. See if I can remember which is the correct one we need for this. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, it only probably took about an hour, or maybe maybe an hour and a half the first time through. Okay, so we want a different one here. So you see now this is actually the sun has uh, formed a cog. We jump into this one. There we go. Look at that.
that's part of the reason I think I really enjoyed this is nothing felt hugely punishing like there's a, there's, there's a lot of other puzzle games things like The Witness uh, which I haven't played but I've kind of read and watched a lot about um, often I don't go for puzzle games because I just I'm not necessarily that great at them and so something that I can play through that's not just ridiculously hard but still has enough challenge This one, yeah. Again, all we're really doing here is shape matching. So I think we need that to be up there. No, that's the wrong way up. So look, I'll show you. We've got the doors the right way, but we need them up 90, uh, 180 degrees so that the um, stairs are the right, right way around. <clears throat> yeah, the first time through there was definitely a lot of um, just dragging things all over the place, like finding out kind of which of those, which of the frames, so we need that to go further around. Yeah, which things come apart as frames, finding the backgrounds that join up. This might have taken me the longest, I think, the, um, this one. There we go, now that's upside down. We've got some stairs. There's a lot of, yeah, just grabbing things, moving them about, seeing kind of what happens. So there's well there's the there's the blue fruit that we need to get. So we need to again find the kind of matching terrain. Uh, the one of these that we haven't used yet is here. You're absolutely right. Yeah, once you get the hang of how the hints are given, the frames can join up for sure. I mean, there is a mode you can play this through um, without those kind of like hints for that, that let you kind of ping and see what's interactable. But I, I like that the frames are so small that you can kind of you can click yourself around without a lot of trial and error anyway. Oh yeah, this one. Look at this. And yeah, these these all three of these puzzles have followed the theme, right? It's figuring out what you need to join together to rotate these pieces. And we can unpack that. Yeah, you're very much getting the kind of Cliff Notes experience here, which I hope doesn't detract from um, the enjoyment of it. This is definitely, um, yeah, more of a more of a kind of uh, showcase of why I love it so much. When I was playing this through, it was um, Evie's birthday, and so there was a horde of screaming children getting full of sugar downstairs, and this was my zen, kind of sitting up here with my headphones on and like just working my way through this, and it was absolutely what I needed. 
Okay, so he has that. Oh, and now that's broken. Those are the, the kind of oom um moments that always get me. Like you zoom something out and sort of expect it to be the same as when you zoomed in and it's something different. And there's an old man. Thinking of falling again. Okay, I won't. I won't jump ahead with this one because it's fantastic. Uh, let me try and remember how we get this. Oh, it's a, there's a door here. That's what it is. Okay, so now he's out onto the train platform. Where are we going for the purple sign? There. Again, you kind of um, like I I went straight to that one and knew it, but like you get the hang of spotting frames, I think. So we pull that one out. There he is. So this one I really love. So this is telling us we need a gold coin, right, to, to put into the slot so that we can get onto the train. So we pull out there. Click into a ring. And there's our coin. Okay, so now we've got the train moving around the tracks. We need to get it to where we want it to go. And again, this is a case of joining the tracks up to move from one frame to the next. And that's going to get him round to arrive at the purple tower. So this next puzzle was the one that I actually found the hardest in the whole game. And so we'll click through here just to have a look around. So you've got this tiny little door and we can kind of click through here to take a look on the other side. And up at the top is our friend the Sinister Dragon. And there's the purple fruit that we need. So we need to figure out how we can get through this wall and in through that purple door. Nothing to do there. So let's see. So that's interesting. He's thinking about something. We can zoom out and see this has got up, left and right gives us um, some actual direct control over him, which direction we want him to go. Now, let's see if I can remember this. So, I, I might need a couple of goes at this one. So there we go. We got it. We send him off there. And then these join up again. And 
we can send him back through. And this is fabulous, because the whole game is. Now we zoom out, and not only have we gone through the wall, but he's tiny. Far too small to get up and through the door. So we need to grow again. And to do that, we're going to do some more of our kind of... Uh, some more of our tricks. We'll tell him to go up. Am I doing this right? That's right, there we go. Now he's going to climb down. Back into this other frame. Thankfully for us, he's going to pause there for a minute. And now as he climbs down this ladder, He's big again. Okay, here we go. And this is where, yeah, this was kind of surprising. So we make him think about this ritual that we've been focusing on. I'll just stay quiet for this next bit. Hi Jazz, you joined us near the end of this uh, playthrough of Gorogoa. We were uh, executing a ritual, collecting these kind of five fruits, and this is sort of, we're getting towards the end of it, but we'll jump onto something else afterwards, don't worry. It's this gorgeous kind of picture book um, puzzle game. If it looks interesting, you should definitely try and like, watch this video back. I, this is my third time playing through. Um, I'm partly doing it to record it for my daughter who wants to kind of watch it through on YouTube. But actually, like, every time I played it through, I love it, even though I know what to do for all the puzzles. And this is where we kind of step through the story. So the boy executed the ritual, ritual fell from the tower. There he was in his wheelchair. And now we're kind of stepping forward through in time. They're rebuilding the tower. Everything's becoming more modern. And now he's here as an old man, back up at the top of the tower. And so this is sort of the prologue. We need to, everything's broken and the colors are gone. So we need to get those back. So the first was red. Yeah, you're not you're not missing out too much if uh, you kind of watch this end end part. We bit whizzed through a lot of the puzzles. Took about twenty five minutes. Um, you would definitely take a bit longer the first time through. And you can always refer back to me as a as a guide if you need to see how to do things. But this will give you a really nice kind of refresher on some of the mechanics. And now we just kind of like whiz through. So there's the first one. Next was green. Oh, 
That was pretty straightforward. <laughs> oh, Jazz, I'm sure you'll, uh, I'm sure you'll do just fine. Okay, and the next was um, yellow. This one requires a little bit more. Um, there we go. So we've joined those two, so the moth can go up. Burns up by the star. And gives us a yellow symbol. Okay. Blue is next. Oops. So this harks back, uh, sound to the uh, rotating puzzles we were doing. But it looks like we're going to need to rotate this one in order for it to work. Those are all linked. Aha, that's it. Another frame. And here's our favourite boy with his. Ah, oh, this. Uh, oh, every time. I love this. So now. Now the boy himself becomes part of the machine. Layers is definitely the, the word, Jazz. Definitely the word. There we go. And now we just got the purple to do. And there he is as an old man again. And this is a mechanic you'll have missed, but you can move this around now. Some of the frames. And it just gives you the full picture like this. Where is it? What am I looking for? There we go. Dive through there. We get another one. These are a lot of pictures that we've had previously. There we go. And there's a panel that we need. And here's our ending. And there we go. Let's go, go.